Hello everyone, my name is Jason Parker and welcome back to this channel about magic. Normally, if possible, I like to share a little magic trick with you guys at the beginning of these videos before we get into the reaction, but I don't have anything ready just yet. So today we're gonna do random questions with you and me. And today's random question is going to be, if you were arrested with no explanation, what would your friends and family assume that you had done? Leave a comment below. I enjoy reading you guys' answers and girls' is, is. And if you wait to the end of the video, I'll give you my answer as well. Unnecessary hand gestures. In today's reaction video, we're taking a look at Kevin McCowd, who is apparently a French magician appearing on America's Got Talent. These are the audition rounds. I've personally not heard of him before, but I've been told that he does some very amazing visual magic on this performance, so I'm excited to see what he's got. Hopefully you're excited too, and let's jump into the reaction. AGT is the house of magic. That's true, there have been a ton of magicians this season, especially. There have been amazing acts right here on this stage that have actually taken over Las Vegas. A residency in Las Vegas is the dream of every magician. AGT has a long line of amazing magicians. This song kind of reminds me of something. What is that? Oh, it's killing me. It's right on the tip of my brain. I wanted to say Harry Potter music, but I don't think that's it. Something more spooky, kind of like maybe Beetlejuice? Beetlejuice? Beetle... No, that's not it. Something kind of like Tim Burton-esque. Maybe I'm thinking of the theme song from Edward Scissorhands. Anyway, it's driving me crazy. I'm gonna have to go back and figure that out later. If you know what song it is I'm thinking about, leave a comment below. I would be happy to know that. And if I figure it out, I'll leave my answer to that song in the pinned comment below so you can check that out. And now we can check out this video. My name is Kevin Miku. I am 32 and I am a mentalist. Me cool. Ever since I can remember, I was interested in the human brain. When I went to the university, I learned about the brain, about the science, or how oh, your brain speak and understand something. When I told people I want to be a mentalist, people thought I was crazy. I was practicing mentalism in secret. But mm. my family was always there for me. Okay. Hello. I love you. I love you. I will be proud to show my daughters, doesn't matter what people say, if you love something, do it. My biggest dream is to have my own show in Las Vegas, and that's why I'm here in AGT. This is my chance to show that I'm supposed to be doing this. Hi. Hello. What is your name? My name is Kevin. Hi, Kevin, and where are you from? France. Where else? <laughs> Silly me. <laughs> Welcome to America. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. And what do you do in France? Mentalism. Ooh, Mentalism? Wow. Yes. Uh, how old are you? I'm 32 since yesterday. You know, I think his clothing style choice there is very interesting. He's got on like a business jacket, but then he's got on these bright, colorful sneakers, ripped jeans, arm tattoos, and like a low v-neck. I think that's a pretty cool style because it says like, you know, professional, yet it's like super casual and trendy at the same time. Very avant-garde. So kudos to his wardrobe designer, or if that's him, kudos to him. Second thing, uh, what he said there in his intro about, you know, being passionate about mentalism and he was kind of embarrassed people were calling him crazy, so he was hiding that part away. But I do admire when people do something despite outward influences. It's so easy for us to be peer pressured or even doubt our own ideas. And it's great to see when people just push through that resistance and continue with the idea of what they wanted to do anyway. I like it. Continuing. Oh, happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Happy so birthday. how long have you been doing mentalism? 12 years. So you do it full time for a living? Now, yes. And what is the reason that you wanted to be here on America's Got Talent? When, when you love something, you want to share with as much people as possible. And this is the biggest stage of the world. Yeah, yeah. That's wonderful. Go ahead. Mentalize. <laughs> oh, dramatic music. I'm gonna show you a mind transmission performance, but between you, judges, and Mr. 
Terry Crews. Wow. Come on, Terry. Okay. Come on. Got Let's give him a hand. Transmission. Thank you so much. Right, so I come to you. Actually, I like that he says, right, I come to you. A lot of other contestants are like, do you mind if I approach the judge's booth? And he's just like, I come to you, no problem. Okay, here we have got photos of AGT finalists from all the seasons of the show. Ladies, you will pick one each and without showing it, look at it, then put it under your cup. Heidi, put your finger on a photo. Okay, take it. Keep your finger. Perfect. Thank you. That's yours. No worries. <laughs> Sophia, put your finger on a photo. This. That one. Take it. Okay. Now, let's do this. Let's do it. Also, you see that little box he's got sitting right there that says AGT finalist with blue, ED, blue LED highlight lights? Because he's a mentalist, I'm wondering, is he trying to subliminally influence them to thinking like maybe he should be in the AGT finalist? You know, just getting that into their mind? Because look at that image. It looks very successful. It's like, bah! Already thinking past the audition stages. At least I feel that's the type of thing a mentalist would think about. Now, I'm gonna extract the mind of Terry. Then, grab your thoughts and put it inside. And so, do a mind transmission. Keep your concentration and your eyes closed from now till the end. And imagine, imagine me extracting the mind from your head. What? And going inside. What? Oh Oh, that then, is insane. Deeper to your memories. Is this video editing? This is crazy. Ladies, think about your contestants, their talents, their props. Heidi, I'm gonna extract the contestant from your mind. Wow. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? <laughs> I'm so confused right now. So many things are happening. I'm like, wait, wait. His mind is extracted and they're, okay, they're putting the thoughts from the judges into his extracted mind, I guess. I don't know, I kind of forgot what he was saying when I see this incredible visual thing, like appearing, like a hologram right there. All my brain's resources went like 100% to trying to understand that. Anyways, assuming that's not uh, a video effect added by AGT through editing, that looks incredible. Let's see what he's gonna do with Terry's brain. Sophia, we had a microphone think about and your now... contestants. Now we have something else. Uh, playing cards. Sense? Yeah. Then, Terry, imagine your mind coming back to your head. If you can imagine it. <laughs> and open your eyes. Wow, so cool. Take these boys and write the names of the two contestants you felt. The two contestants you felt. Terry. Okay. It's all up to you. Show us the board. Cody Lee. No! Shen Lim. Is that correct? It is. No! <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, it is. I'm swimming. It is. <laughs> That's amazing. That's great. Wait. <laughs> Wait. One last thing. Judges, at the very beginning, I left a photo of myself here. The other reason why I left it even before you chose your contestants is because this photo contains my prediction. Whoa! Kevin McKeon. Thank Cow. you. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and give you my thoughts before we hear from the judges. Okay, first off, that was an amazing performance. 
I'm starting to formulate an idea about how he made this incredible visual thing appear. What appeared to be just a glowing hologram in 3D space, as holograms often are. So we have a couple options. Option A, AGT added video editing on top of his performance, but I can't see how that would be possible at all. That doesn't make sense because then he would just be standing up there with nothing in front of him. So that's not really an option. Has to be option B, no video editing. And I'm kind of reminded of this alarm clock that I saw a long time ago where there was like a wand that would wave back and forth and you would see like the time floating in the air. In addition to that, uh, I was at a shopping mall here in Kiev. Uh, I remember seeing this like two years ago. There was some type of advertisement and they basically had like Slimer from Ghostbusters like floating in 3D. I was, go I was going down the escalator and I looked up and I saw it and I was like, what the heck? How is that possible? It was just some like incredible kind of 3D graphic like floating there, advertising something. Obviously it didn't work because I don't know what they were advertising. And yeah, I, when I looked at it really carefully, I even made a recording if I can find that somewhere in my phone. What I understood is that it must be some kind of like LED like blades or wands that are like spinning kind of like a fan and then it uh, just timed to like light up at the right moment to make a, an image and it looks 3D because it's you know apparently not on a screen it's just like seemingly floating in midair. So I guess uh, Kevin here has something kind of like that that he must have customized for magic. I've never seen anyone use this for magic before and I've got to say that was an amazing idea combined with his delight you know where he starts off kind of plucking this memory and he then adds it into this 3D hologram, as holograms often are. Yeah, just what a fantastic idea. I have a couple other thoughts I want to share with you, but let's just proceed and hear what the judges are going to say first. I'm assuming they're going to like it. We need one of those brain things that you had there. That was incredible. I've never seen anything like it before. And what you've done from my brain to Terry's, it was incredible. Thank you. Sophia. I don't even know what to say. That was so much fun, and it was such a different thing to watch. Thank you so much. And Simon, this, this act was sensational, absolutely sensational. It was taking this kind of act into the future. It was unlike anything we've ever seen before. This is a Vegas act, absolutely brilliant. Thank you. The magic is far beyond anything I have seen before. That was appearing in front of us. Those graphics were just floating in the air. I saw Terry Cruz's brain in front of me. It was crazy. I think that's amazing. I've never seen anything like it. I'm so excited. I'm going to start off the voting with a, as you would understand, we. Oh, good job. I give you your second we. <laughs> so many wees today, and now you've got a fourth wee. Thank you. All right, now let me give you a couple extra conclusionary thoughts I've got about his performance. So, Kevin Macau. Apparently, I pronounced it wrong at the beginning of the video. I said Kevin Macowd. Number one thought that I have. Great job, great performance. The whole thing was so well thought out, well done. And I am excited to see what he's got next. I'm assuming he's not gonna continue to do that kind of hologram thing every single time because then it might kind of start to feel repetitive. I don't know. Actually, what do you think watching at home? Do you think he should use the hologram again in his next subsequent acts? Or do you think it makes more sense strategically for him to do something just completely different? Leave your comment below. Maybe he will see it if he sees this reaction video. Sometimes these magicians come on here and comment. Although perhaps it's already been filmed like a month ago. I don't know. It's hard to keep track of reality with these reality TV shows. I think I heard someone say that the audience in that theater was virtually created. I started to look for that and they looked very real, like the people standing up to applaud, sitting down again as the camera was panning around. Were those just old shots from a previous AGT? Number two, did you guys notice those interesting uh, sleeve tattoos, those arm tattoos he had there? I'm doing this so you know what I mean. I was trying to get a good look at those because on his left arm it looked like he had an entire like passage written there and it looks like maybe it could be from a book or a poem and I'm curious what that is. I bet that's a real conversation starter when you're walking around and people are like, whoa, like, hold on, let me read that. It just makes you think 
what text could be so impactful that you would get the whole thing written on your arm. It's not like a one sentence thing. It's like a one page thing. It's like an arm page. Kind of tried blowing up the image here, but yeah, I just can't make out what that is. That would be funny if it was like that default Latin text that they use for like web page builders where it's like lorem ipsum whatever, <laughs> just like meaningless text, but I doubt it. So we are on number two now, number three. <sighs> number three. That card he left on the table, that end prediction he put under the cup there at the very beginning, I feel like that was maybe a little bit anticlimactic because you know he had this amazing hologram, which was 3D as holograms often are, and he showed that he read Terry's mind, you know, he got the thoughts from the judges and implanted them into his brain and got him to write it there. And he was just like, boom, you know, everyone was like amazed, applause. And then he kind of like cut it short and was like, oh, and if you look there, you'll see that I had also predicted this was true, you know? And I kind of felt like maybe it's better to even remove that completely from the act because what does it tell you? It tells you that Kevin knew what they were going to select ahead of time, that he was using some kind of Jedi mind powers. And I just kind of felt like it wasn't necessary. But that's just my two cents. You know, obviously Kevin is the one who's up there performing and he thought through this. I'm sure he had some reason for doing that. Number 2.5. In terms of the actual method, I have a pretty good idea about when he went up to the judge's booth and he was having them select from the photographs. There's a couple different options that could have been there, some of them rough, some of them a little bit more smooth, and even if that wasn't involved, there's an alternative that he could have been banking on, trying to do some code talk there. And in terms of Terry, when Terry was up there sitting on the chair and how he got him to write the correct words. I have two plausible options there. One is that he had him sit there on a chair and you know, it was a little bit covered up. It's possible there was some kind of device on the chair that like through vibration or like a low powered speaker was able to communicate to Terry the names that he should write down. I'm just kind of reaching there. That might not be correct. Option number two, which I think is probably more likely how he did it is uh, pre-show work. And uh, I don't wanna go into too many details about exactly how that works. I'm trying to avoid outright exposure, but essentially it's something that happened before the cameras were rolling, but it's not quite that Terry felt like he was in on it and he was a stooge or a confederate. It's not that. For all intents and purposes, what I could say is Terry will feel like he had a free choice and feel like, you know, he was experiencing the magic as well. That's kind of probably what happened in this case. Just a little something that you and I and the viewers at home weren't really privy to. In one case, you, you could say it's kind of somewhere in the gray zone between what's fair and what's not fair. But they do this type of thing on reality TV shows and competitions and like magic specials all the time. And despite knowing all this, I can still really appreciate how smooth and flawless Kevin's performance was because it's not merely knowing the secrets, it's the presentation, it's the performance as well. And that great idea he had to make this hologram. At any rate, I think Kevin McCow did an amazing job. Please feel free to leave a comment below sharing your thoughts with all of us and we can make a discussion. And it is that time of the video where in which, with a pawn, I read you a random Aesop's fable and we see if we can glean some wisdom that we can actually apply to our lives, like wet leaves, some kind of therapeutic wet leaves that heal the skin. Alrighty, today we have chapter 189. It goes from here to there, very short. The caged bird and the bat. Proceeding. A songbird was confined in a cage which hung outside a window and had a way of singing at night when all other birds were asleep. One night, a bat came and clung to the bars of the cage and asked the bird why she was silent by day and sang only at night. I have a very good reason for doing so, said the bird. It was once when I was singing in the daytime that a fowler attracted by my voice and set his nets for me and caught me. Since then, I have never sung except by night. But, the bat replied, it is no use your doing that now when you are a prisoner. If you only had done so before you were caught, you might still have been free. And the moral of the storyline is, precautions are useless after the event. Yes, that is funny. This bird was so traumatized by being caught singing in the daylight and captured that the bird now avoids singing during the daylight. Got a lot of this tassel whipping going on here. Hmm. Yeah, I like this story. Let's see. If you think in terms of psychology and you think of uh, stimuli and then our response type of behavior, sometimes we build this connection that isn't helpful. You know, maybe when you were a kid, you got scared of clowns and now you're terrified anytime you see a clown. And that's not really 
protecting you in the world. That's not an important connection to have. I mean, how are you supposed to enjoy the circus? Eating your cotton candy, trembling in fear? That is no way to live. Yeah, so obviously it's good to examine our behavior, our phobias, and see if they're holding us back unnecessarily. We do want to know that when you touch the hot pan, you will burn your fingers to avoid that. But we don't, for example, want to have a connection of feeling anxiety when you're in social situations, for example. And it's at this point I would like to recommend you to visit your therapist and get your mental problems worked out. This video is sponsored by nobody. <laughs> I could point to some kind of a therapist service right now if this video was sponsored, but it's not. And in case you don't feel like paying for a therapist or your problems aren't so gigantic, they're small enough you can tackle them yourself, just some introspection. Looking in, thinking, do my responses make sense? Are they helping me? Is my habit loop productive for me? But yeah, in closing, if we rewind back to the moral of the storyline, precautions are useless after the event, but in some cases, precautions after the event can be helpful. For example, if you got hacked, if someone got into your computer, maybe then you take steps to prevent that from happening again, especially if this event could occur again. That's the differentiating factor here. For example, if you missed one of my videos, if you missed my last video, and you could learn from that by going to the notifications bell and switching it from some to all notifications, and then you'll be sure never to miss one of these videos ever again for the rest of your life. Problem solved, precautions taken, and fable interpreted. Thank you for being here. Thank you for smashing like. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. So far, I guess I'm going to be continuing to react to these magicians throughout this AGT season as they progress. That's the plan for now. Again, thanks for being here. I really do appreciate you and uh, have a nice week. Have a nice day. Keep it magical and I'll see you in the next video.